in Asia during the 1980s, horror films were all about Chinese ghost stories, such as a Chinese ghost story. Typically, these films used a spooky spiritual backdrop onto which the filmmakers would hang elements from other popular genres. Comedy, fantasy, and of course, martial arts action, which was so prevalent in Hong Kong cinema. On the slightly more obscure side of this movement is 1983's wonderfully named movie, Devil Fetus. It was produced by the legendary Lo Wei, the man credited with starting the careers of both Jackie Chan and Bruce Lee. Despite the name, the Devil Fetus is only present for a very brief time, and the film becomes a ghostly possession tale, but it is still chock full of all the genre goodness you desire. At an auction, a woman cannot resist throwing all her money at a peculiar vase that is said to hold benevolent powers, bringing the owner good luck and all that jazz, on Criterion Blu-ray. The fact that the vase's ornamental goblin figure is seemingly alive indicates that the mystical powers might not be all that charming. She takes it home and spends way too much time with it alone in her bedroom. No comment. Hmm, actually, some comment as a furry demon thing is released from the vase, and does the dodgy with her. And you know what they say, never underestimate the potency of demon semen. The woman is impregnated, but suffers a most terrible fate. The filmmakers give us the worst cat fake-out scare, <coughs> followed by the very best real cat scare. resulting in her death. At the funeral, the adorable devil fetus attempts to make a special guest appearance, but is rejected via some quick thinking spell work from the priest. Her remains are kept guarded by another protective seal, which must remain undisturbed for a certain number of years for her spirit to be free. Gee, I really hope we don't skip ahead a number of years until the curse is almost lifted but then the woman's now grown up family accidentally disturbed the remains and unleashed the evil spirit once more. All that, and more, is basically the first 15 minutes. The devilish devil spends the rest of the film jumping between host bodies that it uses to commit all kinds of sin. Rape, murder, and worst of all, harmless private masturbation. The plot is admittedly a weird one, but it serves as an amusing vessel for many highlightable scenes. One of the devil's main powers is causing bone-chilling hallucinations to scare its prey. This is a lot of fun, and keeps you on your toes in the early scenes. It's a bit less believable when the hallucinations become a shared experience. For example, these guests are attending a nice party. Look out! A raging fire speeds towards them, terrifying them all, until they realise it's just a candlelit cake. <laughs> they all laugh it off like nothing happened, rest assured. Nobody is laughing when the cake is revealed to be full of worms. There's quite a few gross out moments, so I'm sure all you fans of Scary Movie 2 out there will love it. Meanwhile, fans of creative deaths get a few tricks and treats here too. A dog gets possessed, but the owner is suspected of having a serious case of the Cujos, so the sequence ends in spectacular fashion. Kujo would have been over much quicker if they'd had a samurai sword in the car, honestly. My favourite kill was the dude who shows us what would have happened in A New Hope if the droids had not shut down all the garbage mashes on the detention level. The obvious talking points, beyond the striking 80s hair and fashion of course, are the fight scenes. These parts are just delightful, full of cinematic tricks that don't quite work, but I absolutely love that I even attempted it. Like the live action stop motion. It is probably best if I let the clips speak for themselves. 